choice for it. Okay, so you guys exit the tomb. And then we can be dirty loot goblins after. Okay. Yeah, assuming they haven't filled it back up again. Yeah, it'll fill back up to the brim in the morning. Bear back. When the respawn uh, cycle happens. Oh, they got hyper spawns. That works. Sucks. The blood moon! The blood moon. That is the other feature of this is it happens on a full moon. Or sorry, not a full moon, a new moon. I guess the cool cats we are, we come strolling back to town with this poor girl in tow. How, how is she on the way, like on the trip? Is she like still crying? Uh, she's all fucked up. Like she's witnessed some horrific things. Um, and she's all fucked up, yeah. So, not open to flirting. Understood. Let's keep that to ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that's why I didn't say anything on the way back. Let's probably best to get her to her father as quickly as possible, then. So we can... Okay, so you guys return to Ridgevale. Um... And catch up with Reniel. And he uh, thanks you profusely. Um, Russell offers you uh, drinks and dinner on the house for your heroic uh, rescue. Wonderful. Oh, we never found the fucking 100 silver piece box. No, you did not. Nope. But you guys did say you were going back in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess we just eat, drink. Belagar will, unless anyone wants to roll a diplomacy, I will sell all this gear real quick. I'll roll diplomacy. Okay, roll diplomacy. Thirteen, yeah. You got Almost. the haggle table, uh, Belagar? I'm pretty sure that's just regular price. Yeah, I think that's regular price. Right. Oh, that's your total? Yeah. That doesn't yeah. change anything. Okay, so I'll just add this up and then I'll just distribute all of it then. Do you want to treat that as an assist or as its own separate roll or what? No, nope, whoever rolls first makes the check. Whoever rolls second assists. That puts me up to fifteen percent then. Or fifteen then, which I think is a is a discount. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, so what is... I don't have the table on my uh, laptop. Oh, sorry. I'll grab it for you. Yeah. Base. It'll get up to plus 50. In total, before all the discounts will be applied, we are selling 335 gold pieces worth of equipment. That's not too shabby. Well, that's not bad at all. Plus the 60-something gold we made earlier, too. Okay, I dropped the table in the... Uh... Strife uh, channel. Okay, so we get 55%. That's not bad at all. Okay, so in the morning, you guys are going to gear up and head back to the tomb. Can I um, stop somewhere and buy, like, a cloak? Uh, yep. What do you want a cloak for? Uh, well, there's a riddle. Oh, okay. Just, like, a regular old cloak. See if I can get the same color. Same color as what? Uh, the the night one. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'd have to buy a black cloak. You can give me an insight check. The cloak that the knight was wearing was an armor weave cloak. It's a uh, high quality cloak that uh, provides an armor bonus. Costs thousands. Yeah, as a off-the-rack oh, item, it's an 1,800 gold piece item. I didn't want to buy that. 
just a regular no boat. no 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 i'm not t- i'm not saying that i just if your idea is to get something similar that's what you're aiming for is this super prestigious cloak oh and everyone gets another 37 gold pieces to their inventory so Equate. yeah just a regular old cloak okay you sold 300 and something in stuff and you only got 37 gold pieces uh, it's divided by five. Well, we got fifty-five percent, and then that's divided by five. Oh, okay. I thought the three hundred was uh, with the fifty percent. Nope. Unfortunately, not. Okay, not nearly as good as I thought. Okay, yeah. so you guys head back to the tomb. I just left you where you were in the tomb, so you guys can uh, find your way around at your leisure. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Trinas, but I gotta peel off. I'm getting yelled at by everyone in the house. Because I'm at my sister's for holiday, so... No worries. I gotta peel off for the night. Up to you guys if you want to keep going. Just let me know what happens. Okay. Okay. Alright, talk to y'all later. Peace. Later. 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 Was that Belgor? That was... No, that was Egan. Oh, okay. Did we... Did did they... Did they roll perception down this hallway and notice anything? Notice anything about what? Is there anything that I'm just gonna walk around the hallway and walk around the front door here and do a perception check as I walk around? Okay. Well, like I said, uh, there's two traps in the hall. There's the obelisk. There's the uh, relief there. Oh, I, that's what I was asking. I don't know if we saw the relief. Can I? Yeah, I that? described it to both Belagar and uh, Mason. Okay. Um, can I make anything of it? Uh, you can look at it. Um, okay. I'll check out this. I'll do look around this obelisk. Along the outside wall is a relief of the Knights of Fairfax fighting the forces of chaos. Under the relief is the uh, Fairfax is the Oath of the Fairfax Knight written in Old Archipelago. I don't have perception to try to even read that. Or the linguistics. Linguistics, yep. I call for a mage friend. Does anybody read uh, Old Archipelago? Old Archipelago? I speak present day Archipelago. You might be able to read it. Yeah, I just Are had you a speaking rolling. Archipelagon by default in this uh, continent? Well, it's the common tongue, but... Oh, yeah. Can I... I just don't have the linguistics to try to decipher. Oh, yeah. I don't have any ranks in linguistics yet. You I'll just try to... Any ranks in linguistics? Uh, I had to have a lot of different skills. I think Mason's the only one with ranks in it. Fair enough. Okay. Well, then uh, it's up to Mason. Uh, another 19. I rolled nice. a 16 for a check. You have ranks in linguistics? No, is that a minus five to the check for trying yeah. to So fit eleven. So nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh the bottom of the uh stone relief it says I swear the Fairfax oath to serve order, to battle chaos, and strive to keep the Fairfax lore secret. I definitely have that memorized. Okay. Uh, would I know if I said that it would actually be binding kind of thing? Um, You can roll a knowledge religion check. Oh. Nice. Okay. Um... It wouldn't be specifically binding to you, although um, as a follower of Mistra, you would probably not take such a uh, oath lightly. Right. But if you're a follower of Mistra, you probably support all those things anyway. To battle, to battle chaos, and he's in a chaotic party. <laughs> yeah, but you can be in a chaotic party and battle chaos. True. Doesn't say you have to battle every form of chaos. 
Yeah, just battle the demons or the very evil forms of chaos, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, I'll mention, because I, I forgot to ask you uh, what you guys thought is, I don't know if you heard, but when I read the base of the statue, um, the bastard sword and the shield is like pristine, which probably means it's magical. Uh, but it says, if you want to keep this, you must first give it to me. So I probably would have mentioned buying like a shield or a bastard sword to like give to him. Uh, I cast detect magic on the on the, on statue. the statue. Yeah, the yeah. bastard sword and the shield are both magical. The shield has a stronger enchantment than the bastard sword. Why do I feel like this is a? I, do, I actually don't even remember this one. You say that every single time. So does Joe. Uh, if, maybe if you swear your oath, this oath will... Uh... I'll, I'll tr what does it say at the bottom of the statue? It says, if, if you, you are to keep this, you must first give it to me. Okay, I kneel and give him a note, my oath. You have to give the uh, Fairfax oath. Just, um, just for the record, Nitros is your enemy god. Yeah, I don't give the oath. I just, I don't say that, but I... Someone else want to do that? Because that's not a thing that I would do. I don't think Villagar would do it either. I, it'd be up to... I think there's only one person here who Nitros even remotely appeals to. Or approves of in the first place. <laughs> mm-hmm. That would be you. Mason, do you want to try to give your give the oath to the statue? Oh, no. <laughs> He's good. He's rather not binding agreements to any gods. I try to, yeah, I try to, you know, keep some distance. And I tend not to pledge to more than one god. Oh wait, this is a this is an enemy temple, right? Right, Jerome. The what? I was about to say, uh, Metros is the enemy of, of or an enemy temple to Tempest, isn't it? Is that what John just said? Yeah, I don't think we get anything for destroying enemy temples. Yeah. That's a shame. <laughs> Very tempting. But unfortunately no. Yeah, you also have someone who would uh get in trouble if you did that and I didn't it... respond. I'll give the I'll give the oath to the statue. You said it's non binding, right, Mason, when you did your when you checked? Uh, what was it again? Well, it's not binding, uh, but giving your word, particularly as a lawful neutral person, is not something you take lightly. Yeah. Well, just for the uh, sake of chaos, in your I'll... case, Mason, the the oath doesn't have any drawbacks for you specifically. Like, it's obviously not to your chosen god, but um, Nitros is one of Mistra's strongest allies and uh, you're very familiar with the Knights of uh, Nitros as their prominent uh, guardians of any kind of uh, structure to Mistra. Uh, him Caldur, it's one of the uh, most significant reli religions because the whole majocracy is defended by uh, armies of Nitros. Uh, yeah, so I'll say, um, while it might not be binding, there may be other magics to it, so if you're not sincere. Yeah, it'd be highly suspect for Jerome to say the oath to Nitros. Yeah. Well, while you figure out if you're going to give the oath or get, give it to the statue, I'm going to go search the altar. No one searched the altar yet, right? Nope. And give me a perception check. You don't find anything. Can I keep doing it round by round to check? Or is that a one and done? Uh, you can keep checking it, but... Uh... I'll just do a thorough check. One more one more roll and then that's it. Okay. Uh, can I do another, like, check? Well, I just did. 
um, to see if anything else happened after I hit it with a mending. Is this the big statue here, or is this the suit of armor off, off to the way over off to the side? I'm, I'm checking the suit of armor right now. The Which one has the inscription? The statue has the riddle on it, and the relief in the hallway has the oath. The statue being the big one in the ritual room? Yeah, the, the big one you're standing beside. And that has, sorry, say again, that has the witch on it? That has the riddle. Okay, and the riddle is, if you already keep this, you must first give it to me. Yes. But the, the suit of armor with the cloak isn't either of those, correct? Is what? The the uh, clo- the suit of armor with the magic cloak on it isn't either of those, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm just going to try to say something. I give it my word. Okay. He hands you the sword and shield. Oh. When I go and grab the sword and shield, does anything happen? Nope. Vincent, you have anything to say about this? Uh, I can't say I recommend making empty promises to a god of law, but uh, I'm happy to witness it. It seems like an easy way to get a weapon at the very least. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of look at the weapon and look at the shield. Okay, well, it's a very nice uh, bastard sword. It looks like it's really old. Um, a lot of the uh, artistic aspects of it seem like they're very uh, classic. The shield design uh, is also uh, an old style. This is is the shield design of a certain god, or is it just? Uh, the shield has the symbol of uh, Nitros on it. I kind of just mock the shield, like, huh. All right. Well, I kind of go and show Belgar the the statue. I just I figured the whatever the statue was saying. But really, is that that easy? I just, I guess it was just, he just wanted my word. Well, you gotta keep it? I don't know, this bastard sword looks pretty nice. Aye, it does. So I will put the bastard sword on my back and just ask Belgar, what should we do with the shield of Nitros? Mm. Sell it. Don't mean much to me. Don't mean much to me. What is this obelisk? Can I look at this? Yep. Oh, by the way, when I rolled a 16 perception on my second per- uh, like search check, did I see anything on the altar? Nope. Okay. Uh, did I see anything with my perception check with the armor? Uh, you were looking for changes as a result of your mending? Yeah, see if anything changed or no, it just made to... the armor look nicer, got rid of all the rust and whatnot. Okay. Makes it look pretty. Okay. Uh, Vincent, the uh, obelisk is um, carved in the names of uh, the members of this order. It just goes around and around and around like the Stanley Cup with uh, little plaques on it of all the uh, different members. What's it seem to be made out of? The obelisk uh, appears to be made out of just basic uh, sandstone. Uh, uh, okay. But the uh, the plaques appear to be made out of uh, something like brass. Uh... I guess I'll try the uh, the oath to the uh, armor. Okay, so you say the oath to the armor, and the cloak comes free. Oh. 
Uh, oh. Vince, uh, Belagar, and Jerome, you can roll a perception check. 15? Would a 16 help that? Uh, no, 15 is more than enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you hear a loud stone-on-stone uh, stone grinding sound coming from uh, the uh, ritual room. Uh, I mentioned Do that I to the party, and anything? I go check it out. You see exactly what you can see. Oh, There's I mentioned door that to, opened. I mentioned to the party that I heard something, and I I'll clearly see a door open, and I yell back to the party. There's a door open, you know, that opened over here. Uh, I'll, I'll grab the cloak and run up. Okay. Get the cloak off the armor. Yeah. It's a nice cloak, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what it does, but I'm wearing it. You're putting the cloak on? Oh, yeah. Okay. As a bare minimum, it gives you plus one to your armor class and uh, one point of DR. Oh, neat. Well, I guess I cast light out. I cast light on my sword and walk in. Full of mind. Uh, do I notice the weapon and the shield are gone because I wasn't in there when he did that? Yep. You can ah. see the hands are outstretched now. Kind of looks goofy. Uh, can you give me a... Okay, thank you. Oh, it looks like we got a crypt in here, boys. Hey, we do. Wonder uh, who it belongs to. Those knights, maybe? Maybe. Can I roll a history check on here? Or a religion check? Yep. That would be a... 21 religion. Okay, this appears to be the tomb of the Knights of Fairfax from this uh, branch. I think we have some tombs of the uh, enemy... enemy um, enemies the enemy fa uh, faction alliance or god hey well you know wouldn't it hurt to take a, a quick look at some of these belgar is going to approach i i i open. stop belgar and say why we should not desecrate the tomb as much as these are enemies we should not desecrate the tomb okay, belgar will stop us he's got his fingers in the lid to give you a raised eyebrow and say and why not because it is not right. The dead oh. should stay dead. Oh, they're dead. They don't need their belongings. The living do. I I just I, I don't stop Belgar. Go for it. I also second that. You shouldn't disturb the dead in here. Mm. <laughs> Fine. I don't I don't stop Belgar. If Belgar wants to, I just kind of shake my head and. What about Secret those Steve. treasure chests in the corner over there? Uh, would I know about like specific treasure chests in there? Like if it was a coffer, as like a tribute? Uh, the chests in the corner are large uh, iron chests. They're way too big to be like coffers or anything. They look like they're large storage chests. Um, one of the things that came up when you guys were discussing um the loot was the hundred gold pieces. The bugbear has the hundred gold pieces, or hundred silver pieces from the uh, merchant. Well, Valgar, you can open the open the tomb. Take a peek. Oh, I won't even... stop. I won't stop you. I mean, even you're a holy man of Tempest, so you seem to be ragging on him. So it's kind of like, mm, I'll take a step back, shrug his shoulders. Fine. You don't think it's right. I I can say I I have no opinion here. This is technically an enemy. This is enemy territory. But as I think we should show some respect towards the dead. As far as I'm concerned, it's only really about the danger here. But they have seen fit to include at least some traps. So well, they that is magical. the main it's... consideration. Well, uh, is there any magic around here? 
I'll cast, I'll stand, I'll kind of try to shoulder beside Belgar and cast Detect Magic and, uh, I think it's called something okay. like that. Okay, you do not detect any magic that you're unaware of, but you also know that stone and iron would block uh, your Detect Magic. I'll let that I... Very, very carefully, just check all these coffins and these treasure chests in the back and like the room in general for traps. Yeah, like, right. as far as I know, we don't have any time constraints, so I, I do want to do just like the take, like the, the um, full round action for tile sort of thing. Yep, you can do that. So that's a plus 10 for full round, you said. Yeah. Uh, 21. You don't find anything. Um, I'll cast Detect Magic, scan the room for any sort of magical auras. The treasure chest included. Jerome already did that. He did not detect any magic. I'll, uh, I'll reiterate to what I said to Belgar, that stone blocks magic from being detected. I'll examine the chest closely. What kind of like, uh, what do they look like they are? Are they just treasure chests or are they like... Um, yeah, of... they look like big, heavy, sturdy storage chests. They seem to have fared pretty well, better than the armor outside. It's much drier in here. What time do we go till? Uh, normally till 10.30. We can go as late as you guys want to go. I don't have anything to do tomorrow. I'm officially on Christmas holidays, so... I think the only one who had time constraint was uh, Agen. I need to do a long drive tomorrow, so I can't be up yeah. all night, but that's that's less of a concern, because apparently my brother isn't going to be here until 3 a.m. Well, my time, so like 1 a.m. your time. Yep, I doubt we're going to be going for three more hours, so... <laughs> I'll I'll basically take twenty on this chest. Like I don't I don't trust this at all. Okay. And like say on just the one coffin. No, I won't like I take twenty on all of them, but I don't I feel like they're gonna pop out of the coffins or some shit. Belgar will keep watch while he does this, like keep his hands on okay. his axe just in case. So you're just checking yeah. them for traps? Uh for traps or any signs that they might like like any signs of danger that I can think of. So traps, um Something might pop out of them. Um, yeah, that's all I can really think of. With like traps above them, or that the room will snap shut again, or something like that. Okay. You do not find any signs of those things. Uh, it'd be a thirty-six if I took a nat twenty, or yep. I guess a forty-one. Um, so when did the room open? Is when we did which thing specifically? I know that we took some sort a sword and shield, and we took a cloak, and we someone swore an oath. You can roll an insight check. Fourteen. Uh, you're not exactly sure when it happened, but um, it was happen. It happened while you guys were muddling around the obelisk to the north. Hmm. Does is the chest locked? Nope, the chest is not locked. It is um, a little uh, like jammed because it's old and a little rusted. Ah, let's see how this kills me. I'll open the chest. Okay. What's even in it? Is it just like their belongings or is it... Uh, the chest contains... Uh, organs or something? Yeah, I'm describing it. Shut up while I'm describing it. Sorry. Chest contains a uh, thousand gold pieces, uh, or not a thousand gold pieces, a thousand silver pieces, uh, two potions, and that chest has a mighty composite longbow strength plus one. That's pretty good. I'll check the other chest. Uh, the other chest also has a thousand silver pieces in it, two potions, and a masterwork longsword. I'll say, does I, can I like examine them to see if I, they look like they were used or like knowledge history appraise something? Uh, yes, the items are used. They look like they have been used in battle um, quite, quite significantly. Like the, 
the longsword has definitely been cleaned up, but it's obvious that it's been sharpened many times. Mm. Yeah, I'll say uh, to Belgar, there's a lot of coins here, but um, nothing else of too much value. We need some potions. I think we could take it. I'll look over to Jerome and say, any objections on moral grounds? She's not a grave at the very least. Drone fall in. No, what's up? Uh, I'm asking if you have any objections on moral grounds if we take these two treasure chests. I have no moral grounds on taking any loot we find. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's take them. Okay. okay. Is, are they easily stacked on top of each other if need be? Well, it's a thousand silver pieces. is wow. like a ten-pound bag of coins. Okay. I believe uh, it's a pound per 50, so it's 20 pounds. It's yep. pound per 100. Ah, okay. Belgar will grab a chest then. He's dwarf well, the, the chest weighs like 70 or 80 pounds. I mean, oh well, yeah, true. chest weighs way more than the silver pieces in it. So we, yeah. We should just... If you cast mending on this chest, would it be worth anything? I mean, it's mended. Um, It's a heavy duty chest. It's probably worth something, but you have to lug it all the way back to town. And let's just put all the contents of one chest in the other, because I assume that, if it, the chest is 70 or 80 pounds, then it has a lot of extra space, right? Yep. Okay, we can do that. Just do a, a one-for-all deal. Then you're just going to lug the chest back? Yeah, I'll just I'll just carry it. I mean, Belgar's strong enough, and he, his weight is reduced, or his speed is reduced between 20, because he's a dwarf. Does it have identifying marks? Uh, no, there's nothing specifically uh, special about the chest. It just looks like a very well-made iron chest. Yeah, I was just wondering as far as whether people know we looted a tomb of some non-evil god. Uh, no, there are no markings on the chest that signify uh, ownership. Alright, seems good. like a good deal to me. Alright, okay, let's take it off. Okay, are you guys done? I think so. And then you said there is a hundred, uh, hundred silver pieces from the uh, bugbear. Bug bug yeah, the bugbear had the uh, change box for the merchant. So a hundred silver pieces in random coins. Uh, I'm gonna ask one of the. I'm gonna ask the wizard. Um, is there any way we can redecor, redecor this uh, shield? Are you asking me? Yeah, which your character would know if I could re change the design of the shield, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would know that. John, would that be a thing he would know? Oh, uh, you can roll a knowledge arcana on it. Uh, 28? You can definitely rework a magical uh, shield or armor. Um, it's time consuming and uh tedious but it is possible to uh alter it yeah well I'll, I'll give that but i'll also leave a, a warning say you know, i'm guessing you left a your word or an oath so desecrating a holy relic is probably not the best idea i'll just i'll take that into consideration and i'll just plop the shield on my back Okay, so you guys heading back to town? Yes, I think so. Sounds good. Okay, so you guys can uh, level up and uh, sell your loot. Gotcha. Does anyone want the Masterwork Longsword or the Composite Longbow? I assume... <laughs> Oh, I guess I'm taking an average from here on. <laughs> Good job. Minimum, minimum. Also, minimum. 
too. Mage rolls a five. Yeah. Mage. Hey, I thought I would have three or Did you re-roll a five? Oh, was the is that not the minimum? The minimum on D twelve is four, but uh, uh, my bad. <laughs> still seems silly to re-roll a five, or even a four. I guess it doesn't really matter. One, two, three, four all ends up being the same. Yeah, it's all rolled like shit. <laughs> Fair enough. Actually, I'm just going roll. to state for the record, Mason, while you do get one reroll uh, per character for your hit points, the probability of rolling above average for a d6 is very low. Um, I'm going to ask Russell, is if there a... Uh... There are mage in town. Uh, there is not a mage in town, uh, but one of the uh, the merchants from uh, the mage guild uh, is in town. Do you know if he would have the magic capacity to cast uh, an identify spell? Um, I don't think he has that kind of power. But, I can uh, cast an identify spell. You, you can, can cast, cast an identify. Yeah, it's on my spells now. Oh, I just didn't realize you'd taken it. Yeah, so I can oh. just swap it out and cast that whenever we get the time. No, it's just okay. not a common spell for first level casters to take. Well, I will ask you to for the next day. I want. Uh, I would love to ca to uh, castings of it. It does cost money to cast for the hero. It costs, will... say, 100 gold pieces to cast, and it has a relatively low chance of success when you're first level. Oh, does it have a success? Because it doesn't say this. Yeah, I, I put the uh, percentile chance back on it. So what would be the percentile chance? Oh, it's only 20%. Okay, that's useless. I didn't know that part. Yeah, I, I went back to using the second edition version, where you get one item per level and then a percentile chance uh, per level as well. So 100 gold pieces for a 20% chance to figure on out what two, items On with. two items, yeah. So not particularly functional for you. No. Yeah, so I'll I thought just... it was the, the player's handbook version. No, I understand. That. That's why I was pointing it out. You can swap it out if you don't want it. It's still a good spell. Can, it's just... can I swap mine out as well? Yep, most definitely. Okay. Would I know if this bastard sword would be do more damage than my great axe? Uh, probably not more damage. Okay. A masterwork bastard sword would do two d six, and then it's uh, to be magical, it'd be at least a plus one weapon. So two d six plus one is basically well, the same as your bastard battle axe. Hold on to it until I uh. Until I can get it identified. Twenty-seven HP hit points, eh? Barbarian with twenty con. Yeah, barbarians out of control. Actually, I should put you guys on the front page because these tokens are meaningless. If I roll pretty bad, that twenty con is save or right, saving my ass. Oh, well, I can come give me this all. It's something yeah, Josh has a neat rule for his game where he allows you to re-roll if you roll your con modifier or lower. Which I've never I've never heard that before. Um that's a neat rule. I've used oh. I've used the minimum die for the whole time I've been running uh third edition. I actually used it in second edition too. Well, here's the question now, what shall we do? Well, I guess uh, before we. So, does anyone want this master of longsword or this bow? I assume we're re you're selling all this stuff. Are we going to sell everything? That's why he's asking. Do you guys want it before he sells uh, it? No. Did uh, we do anything I with would... that staff? I think the one, one of the mages took it. Yeah, I'm going to take it if uh, if uh, Mason doesn't want it. I'm. I say we hold off on selling the sword and shield until we can get it identified. 
I'm just talking about like the regular uh, masterwork stuff we found. Yeah, in you the need stuff in the chests. I would I also. Those... I'm curious what that cloak does, cause, and we need to know how we're distributing treasure. Is it like pixies, or is it distributing by value, or what? I think round. I always preferred round robin. Just like someone gets like whoever fits fits, fits best to like the staff or makes... like like if one of you mages takes a staff, the next mage with the mage who didn't get a staff will get that get it the next time. For us fighters, well, yeah, we are, know how round robin works. The question is, are you doing that? I. Are you doing it by value, or are you just doing it by picks? Anybody have any opinions? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with just doing give like a signy loot to who would benefit from it most. But it's kind of like with three fighters, I think it kind of gets a, a little weird. Just because people might say it's unfair, it's like, well, I wanted that plus two strength belt, so I think, uh, I mean, it's fine, like rolling off or doing whatever. It doesn't really I like me. doing by value at higher levels, but at low levels where the items you can find sometimes just vastly like outweigh the wealth you have, it kind of gets weird. I'd also argue that any strength items would start with you, go to Agen, and then me. Yeah, but how you divvy up the the items is not I the know. question. It's... The question is, do you want to do picks or do you want to do value? Mm. Obviously, if you have something that everybody in the party wants, you have to come up with a system to determine that. Yeah. The reason that we're discussing it at first level is so that we have a system. If you have a plus five ring, nobody in the party can afford it. So is someone going to take it as their pick or are you going to sell it and split the money? Uh, I know I'm the odd person out here. Um, I've always just done like the loot council, you know, just discuss it. Whoever yeah, you, you can do loot council. That's basically what Jesse's saying is we use that as a basis for it. But if you keep track of who's got what in the picks, like Belagar took the axe, Jerome took or Aegon took the armor and then Jerome took his armor and you took the staff. That means that the next thing up is Vincent's pick. Obviously, if that thing that comes up is a plus one bastard sword, Vincent's probably not going to want that. Or a magical shield. He's also not going to want that. So if you keep track of who's had multiple picks, you just keep a list of magic items and what you guys have picked, then you know who gets first dibs. So when something that is good for everyone comes up, well, Vincent hasn't picked anything, so he gets the plus one ring. Like the, the cloak is good for anyone in the party. Everybody can benefit from it. In yeah. fact, it has no value no value to anyone uh, other than Jerome uh, beyond just being a plus one armor class bonus. Do we know what the cloak does yet? No, you guys haven't had it identified. So you don't know what it does, but for the, the only, there's only one person in the party who can make use of the one ability of the cloak specifically above and beyond everyone else and that's your own um, but it's not really significant at this point if mason wears the cloak and it gives him a bonus then he gets that bonus and this is what i was saying about um going with picks is you can then decide oh yeah we got the cloak identified it turns out it's not that great for me i'm throwing it back into the pile and picking something else um can i just cast identify on it you just said you took to identify off your list. No, I didn't. You specifically asked if you could switch it off. Or I said you could switch it off. Oh, it was Mason who asked to switch it off of his list. You can yeah. definitely cast identify on it. So I'll, uh, at the very least, borrow the staff for the plus one cast to the level and then cast identify on it and try and roll. Wait, you can, the component well, if you're, if you're going plus one cast to the level, you can identify three things then. Oh, I forgot it's 100 uh, gold material. Yeah, I'll, it's 100 I'll gold pieces. That. You got lots of money. I'll spend the gold pieces on it. Yeah, well, okay. the gold pieces will come out of the group treasure. Oh, yeah, just 20 each. No, you just take it out of the 2,000 silver pieces. Oh, so no I'm trying to really 71 or higher? Uh, yep. And then can I target the same item three times? You cannot target the same item three times, but you can target uh, two other items. I'll do the sword and shield, I guess. Uh, do you have anything else that's magical? Not as far as I know. 
Okay, just checking because the sword and the shield do what the sword and the shield do 99% of the time just by being a sword and a shield. I mean, if he's already cast a spell in the cloak, he might as well figure out the properties of the... Uh... No, I was just checking to see if you guys had anything else that needed identifying, that's all. I'll do those four potions that we found in the um thing. Cast Tech Magic. Oh, there you know the shield does. That is nice, because that is the most powerful magic item. It is a plus one animated, lesser animated uh, shield. Oh, well, that's actually kind of big. If we took the 100 gold or silver pieces, or 1,000 silver pieces out of the thing, this is what one's cut is now. And... So plus, yeah, it costs us 20 gold makes sense. As, like, that actually is kind of big, because as much as Tempest being big brute two-handed fighter, I think we might need a tank in the party, and I'm willing to do that role. I mean, we have Belgar. I mean, like, AC tank, not a health tank. Uh, I guess that's fair, but um, I was planning to buff you all up pretty well as well. At later levels, anyways. Yeah, he's just... eventually going to take a 4th level spell when he gets 4th level spells. That's off in the future, though. It's a fair point. That that was my point. You keep bringing it up, I'm going to cast Mass Shield, and I was like, yeah, in 6 levels. I could technically use that Masterwork Longsword and then get this shield repurposed to become a tank. Be become a gr fr the frontline guy. Okay. Do you want to take the, the longsword? Because I'll have to redo the math real quick again. But, because I can't use this bastard sword one-handed. Sure enough. I don't okay, know what are uh, the group's thoughts. Do we want a front? Do we want someone in the front who is more juicy than strong? Belagar, are you noting uh, who's taking which items? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Okay, I saying. just wanted to find out if that was something oh, you were tracking. John, I got two potions, by the way. You got two potions what? Uh, from the chest, I got the first. And oh, you potion. identified two potions? Yeah. Oh, I got the I got three potions. The first, third, and fourth. I'm plus five to my bonus, and I cast detect, cast a detect magic. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. One of the so, potions uh, is bull strength. One of them is cat's grace, and one of them is bear's endurance. Sorry, so, uh, Belagar. It's fine. So Sean got the the wand the the wand right, or the what, what was it he got from the? Uh, well, I borrowed the staff for identify. If uh, okay. Mason wants to keep the cloak, then I'll take the staff. What do you want to do, Mason, then? The Mason, the, their cloak's probably a lot more valuable, but uh, that's up to you. I don't want to make choices for you. Uh, I mean, loot, loot, like, it's not going to hurt my feelings if someone takes it. My only reason why I was taking it was because I was the only one able to touch the statue. Yeah, there's also that. The cloak is at me. Or the statue is at me. I don't know if that was the cloak. I just assumed it would have zapped everyone else because you guys follow similar gods. Yeah, they're all followers of Tempest. And Vincent is... You're not a follower of Tempest, are you? Nope. What is your alignment? Uh, I put chaotic neutral, probably leaning evil, but okay. I'm definitely more glory-seeking than... Uh, Conniving, I would say, at this point. Okay. No, that's right totally fair. I have, I have I, I, I've said before, I don't really place too much stock in alignment, so if you ever feel like, oh, you're doing something super evil, then I can, you can just say I'm chaotic evil. Nope, that's totally fine. You guys are definitely riding the line on uh, evil with your wanton killing and whatnot, <laughs> but uh, not uh, anything that far off for chaotic neutral uh characters murder hobos yeah if you're pretending to be good and you're killing helpless people fleeing targets that kind of stuff that's highly suspect but in a combat situation as a chaotic neutral guy um 
Attacking fleeing opponents is probably not very honorable, but that's a personal choice. Um, in a military situation, it's common to kill anyone that's down. We make sure they're dead. Yep. Okay, so, I mean, it's it's fine if you want to go tank, Jerome. I, I don't really have a problem with that. I just... you Do you want to take the shield and the, the longsword, then? So, you said you wanted to be a combat player, I thought. Yeah, and I, I am going to be a combat cleric. So you generally want a two-handed attack or a two-handed uh, style because it requires fewer feats and it benefits more from strength buffs that you cast on yourself. I guess down the road, but that's way down the road before I can, because I know there's. Yeah, a you can there. you can take the shield and then just be a tank in the interim, but I would still start i would still keep taking feats and whatnot that go yeah towards i'm going I'm, I'm going to like i'm taking power attack cleave but i'm going meta magic so because i want to be able to cast righteous might divine power and divine favor all in one turn so that's my eventually my goal makes sense so like i'm going i'm going melee cleric but i'm going to be also not afraid to cast spells Alrighty then. But in the you guys have a plan. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> the the damage on a matchwork longsword is D10, right? 